When I was a youth minister, I think I was in my first or second year of seminary, I was asked to be the youth minister of the, the home, my home church, and the little hometown that I grew up in, little Baptist church. And so that first summer that I was the youth minister on the job, uh, the previous leader had already signed them up for a youth camp. Now this was not the type of camp that I would have signed them up for. In fact, the, after that, that summer, any camp that we went to was more mission oriented, more service oriented. But this camp that we went to was a Baptist camp and the day consisted of, of, of meals and in the morning there was a, a worship service kind of get the day going and then uh, there was a lot of fun projects that they did together and a team you know like they, they had a lot of fun right and then uh, at the end of the day after supper there was this really big uh, worship service and it included a, a, a loud music and just it was emotionally charged and the speaker was just incredibly dynamic and articulate and and, and so the worship led up to, it kind of built the emotional, uh, the, the emotion of the room, right? And so by the end of the sermon, and the preacher had the altar call, the come to Jesus moment, the kids were crying and hugging and, you know, just, it was cathartic, you know, emotion was just pouring out of the kids and, um, it was a pretty emotionally intense experience. I'm sitting here watching all of this and sometimes the kids would go down the aisle and give their lives to Jesus three, four, five times, you know. They just kept giving their life to Jesus. And what's interesting is that when we got home from this experience, oftentimes the young folks it wasn't necessarily a life-changing experience. Like once the intensity of that emotional high or the emotion, you know, kind of wore off, we got back to sort of reality, right? It was kind of fun to watch the youth leaders. They tried to keep that, that, that you know, momentum going and at the home church and it just, it never really worked, right? And it just didn't seem like it was a, a truly transformative experience for the young people. And I remember at the camp, the last day of this particular camp, and you know, the altar call had been made, the kids are crying and hugging, and you know, all this stuff is going on. There was a, there was a teenage girl sitting beside me, and she was a young teenager, and she just wasn't caught up in it, right? And she wrote down on a piece of paper, I hate myself. And I didn't know how to respond. At that time in my life, and that time in my ministry, the reality is I hated myself too, right? I could have written it, I, I feel the same way about myself at that time in my life. So I did the best I could in the moment. I wrote on a piece of paper, God loves you. And she just gave me that look like, really? That's all you got? I think a little later I might have spoken to one of the other youth leaders who was a female, a woman, maybe to talk with her about it. I just didn't know how to handle it. But I learned something that night. I learned that all that emotional, cathartic, intensi you know, all that intensity, for me, that wasn't ministry. All that that was taking place. But that young woman sitting beside me who wrote, I hate myself, and how I sat with her in that, how I would respond and later be able to use some skills and experience to help her, that for me was ministry. That was ministry. How do I respond to this person who is so emotionally troubled in this moment? 
You know, I thought about that experience when I was reading the gospel lesson for today. Because there is a lot of emotion in this story, is there not? If we go back a little earlier, Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead. And the crowd was enthralled with that. They couldn't wait to see Lazarus. Is it true? Jesus raised him from the dead. We got to go see this. And then the, and then the religious leaders, they wanted, they wanted Lazarus dead in addition to Jesus. It was like a mafia movie, right? They're just trying to take everybody out. Lazarus has to go too. And so we have all this intensity, right? And then Jesus knows that going into Jerusalem, he knows how risky that is. They already want him dead. And yet he goes anyway. And the crowd surrounds him. Hosanna! Hosanna. You know, the, the emotional intensity of that moment, it was cathartic. Perhaps there were tears. Yet if we follow Jesus in the story, when the, cry, when the crowd quiets down, and perhaps even disperses, and Jesus is with himself. You know what he says? My heart is troubled. I can't go, I can't go any further. I can't do this. I can't do this. But I have to. I have to keep going. But my heart is troubled. That's faith. That's faith. That's the faith journey right there, church. Not all the emotional, cathartic, intentional intensity, the emotional experience that we oftentimes desire. Isn't that what the news does to us, right? We want that. But the faith journey is, is entering as deeply as we can into the reality of our life experience in the moment. Whatever that reality is, to be with it within ourselves, whether it's pain, sorrow, grief, joy, excitement, anticipation, whatever that life experience is, to enter into it, be willing to enter into that reality and discover once again the love of God in it. Jesus said, my heart is troubled. He was in it. Yet out of the love of God, he kept moving forward. Entering as fully as we can into the reality of our experience and finding the love of God waiting for us there. God loving us through it. That's the life of faith. And we do it together, do we not? When we gather together, especially on Sunday morning, whether we like it or not, we bring it all here. All that we've worried about throughout the week. All that we have celebrated, anticipated. We bring it here into this moment together. And hopefully together, we enter into it together and together we rediscover the love of God once again. So church family, as we enter Holy Week and we follow Jesus to the cross, let us continue to enter into the fullness, enter into the reality of our own life experience, whatever it might be, and encounter once again 
the inexhaustible, unconditional, beautiful love of God. Let it be so. Amen. God is good. And all the time. Church family, just look around you this morning. It's a beautiful sight. Beautiful folks this morning. Remember that we are the church. Amen. Amen. We're called to love one another, to care for one another, to hold one another emotionally. It's all spiritual, so of course we hold one another spiritually. Sometimes we have to hold one another physically, physically hold one another. We're called to forgive one another, to have compassion for one another, and we're called to join together to confront the powers that be, to confront evil in our world, systematic sins such as racism and sexism and homophobia and xenophobia. We confront it. We call people out. We try to change this world. We try to make a just world for all. We join God in working for God's reign. Amen? Amen. We get into good trouble. We get into good trouble, just like Jesus. Amen? Amen. Receive this benediction, church family. As you leave this place, may you be awestruck by the beauty of this world. May you laugh and may it be contagious. May you overflow with love for those around you. May you be effusive with hope and quick to point out joy. And in all of your living and breathing and being, may you find yourself full to the brim with God's Holy Spirit, and may it change your life. In the name of the lover, yes, God is our lover, the beloved and love itself. Go in peace, full to the brim. Amen.